Hello and welcome to The Bowl Show. All thanks to Drinkwise, you won't miss a moment if you drink wise. We made it. It's time for the blockbuster BPL 19, a grand final held at the Moama Bowls Club with the Moreton Bay Pirates taking on the Melbourne Pulse. Two teams stacked with national and international talent. As always, Bowls Australia's Val Febo is here and Val, I am excited for what we're about to see today. Jordan, I'm pumped. I'm glad to be sitting here alongside you for this massive contest between the Pulse and the Pirates. The Pulse, they've won, they won two events in 2022, haven't won one since. And the Moreton Bay Pirates, it's been a long time since they saluted at the Bowls Premier League. So I'm looking forward to seeing who comes out on top. It's going to be so close. All right, all the action coming your way shortly. Let's start off, though, with some of the news. All thanks to OMF. Upgrade to OMF's adjustable bed base for customised comfort and improved sleep quality. Now, Val, a few weeks back, we announced the two new teams that will be coming up at BPL 20 in November later this year. So we thought we'd share with you on TV the club themes, the colours, the logos. Let's have a look here and ask the question, Val, how is the lead up to the biggest Bowls Premier League Australia has ever seen coming along? 12 teams. I know, it's quite unbelievable and, you know, it, 10 teams seemed like a lot when they came in for BPL 14 when we went from 8 to 10, but this is something gargantuan, Jordan, and to see 12 teams go head to head with some of the best bowlers that Australia and the world has to offer, it's going to be wonderful and I can't wait to get up to Pine Rivers in November and I'm, you know, I'm curious to see how it's all going to go because it, you know how even it'll be how the final series might look and you know it, it's just going to be wonderful and the pageantry of the bpl has always been there but now there's a lot more at stake because it's going to be even harder to win so the first title in this new 12 team era at bpl 20 which is a milestone in itself um, i think this is all really fitting to go to the spiritual home of the tournament where it all started back in 2013 and i cannot wait yeah it's incredible how much the sport has grown isn't it we've gone from 8 to 10 to 12 teams we've got the mix of some of the regional teams and the big city teams melbourne's and sydney's and the like yep. and now geelong uh, uh, a regional centre, so incredible for bowls, incredible for the sport here in this country. Let's get to Around the Greens, all thanks to Bowls Australia. Local legends wanted, search bowls clubs near me. Val, what is this week's Around the Green? The Australian Indoor Championships, they're coming up just a couple of weeks away now and some of the best indoor players from around the country all have had to come through their qualifying stages in their respective states and I'm looking forward to seeing these, uh, these knockout draws come to life. 32 players in the men's and women's draws respectively, August 12 to 15 at Club Tweed. Ray Pearce and Samantha Atkinson won last year and they had the opportunity to go play at the World Bowls Indoor Championships in Guernsey in April. So really looking forward to seeing who will line up in the green and gold next year because there's a lot up for grabs if you win the Australian indoor title. Absolutely. All right, let's get stuck into the lineups as we preview this BPL 19 grand final for Right at Home, the Right Care Right at Home. And the first lineup, Val, is the Melbourne Pulse. Well, the Melbourne Pulse, they'll be feeling right at home on the greens at Moama. Barry Lester, Gary Kelly, and Alan Fife, three players that are playing some exemplary bowls under the tutelage of Andrew Breedham Walton, who filled in for Jeremy Henry after he had to rush home in the uh, in the middle of the tournament but this team we know what they're going to produce they're a two-time champion already together and let's see what they can do up against a very very handy opponent and who have the Morton Bay Pirates got in their lineup some of the biggest names in bowls yes Dawn Heyman one of the most informed players in the country or the world Ryan Burnett an absolute superstar in his own right and the greatest of all time Alex Marshall MBE uh, one of, I think he's Scotland's most successful Commonwealth Games athlete of all time, Ooh, which really? is quite unbelievable, considering incredible. swimming offers so many more medals than bowls. Yeah. He's a five-time Com Games gold medalist. It's quite unbelievable. And Alan Faulkner, the coach, um, she's a Com Games gold medalist, world champion in her own right. So what a mind to have at the helm. Well, with that, our coverage of the BPL 19 Grand Final begins on the other side of this break. So don't go anywhere on The Bowl Show. Welcome back to The Bowl Show, all thanks to Drinkwise. You won't miss a moment if you drink wise. We are here at the Moama Bowls Club for the grand final of the BPL 19 competition. So let's get into the game. It's getting cooler now. A lot of people have gone with the jackets. You can see some of the players, even last game, were playing in hoodies. It's a contrast. 
Lindsay Clark is going to have a chat with one of the Pirates faithful. The Pirates faithful, yeah. <laughs> I've got Moama super coach, uh, he's a Bowls operations manager here. He's now uh, the Pirates' biggest fan. Kevy, how's your night going? Yeah, really good, Lenny. Everyone's having a good time. Bundles in the final. Uh, no, it's been great. Atmosphere's good. <laughs> uh, look, first off, let's talk about your amazing team here at Moama, from the volunteers to the staff. Everyone here is so, so good. Oh, it's been a great week again, Lenny. Um, Stuart White's done an amazing job again with the volunteer coordinating, so massive thanks to Stu. All the volunteers, staff have been outstanding, and all the supporters, especially these Brisbane guys, they've been awesome all week, so it's been a great week. Tell us, look, there's a bit of a hard luck story with this team is just missing out in the last goal, but how great to still see all this support out here anyway. Oh, yeah, but I think we made seven finals in a row, so to miss once, it's not the end of the world, so yeah, these things happen, but again, it's been a great night, even though the home team's not in the final, the crowd's outstanding, and yeah, it's been really good. So you know the sign, those who can't coach play, or those who can't play coach, how's that going for you now? Yeah, he's going all right, isn't he? <laughs> I think he's just, just skipped the second set, actually. I think it's been a bit rough on him, so hopefully he gets on the second set and we can cheer him on to victory. Tell us about um, what's happening at Moama, what's coming up next for you guys? Uh, state, uh, what we got? Pennant semi-final tomorrow, Bendigo away. So uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. And then uh, probably May Campbell. Yeah, so a bit coming up. And then um, yeah, state, state, Pennant finals here in May as well. So yeah, a few events coming up, but this is the big one. So once this is done, we'll have a couple of months to chill, then we'll get back into it again. Beautiful. Well, I'll let you go and enjoy this one, mate. You've done a fantastic job to you and all the team. Congrats to everyone at Moama. Thanks, Lenny. Cheers. Appreciate it. Thank you, Linz. Great to hear from Kevin Anderson. Barry Lester stalking this down with a pulse counter against the Pirates' power play. What a good line. It's, it's going to help. Poked it forward to double up the shot. Yeah, it's been some good leading from Barry Lester, and particularly these last couple of events. Putting a lot of pressure on Dawn Heyman. Let's see what she's got here. Focus for Gary. Yes. Keep coming, mate. Play the well. Good. Looking for the respot. Oh, it's set up very nicely for the pulse. The only thing that can go wrong is uh, Taddy drawing the shot here. His last words. Oh, and what a shot it was. Just gave it a chance, just enough that if he got a piece of the jack or, as we see here, got the balls and just got the perfect result to just stay in the head. It always plays that way to just stay in the head, doesn't he? Is that a touch never, on never wasted. Oh, that's online. Chasing the shot ball here. Oh, so you're going to get it clean. What a, what a shot. great shot. There is nothing this man can't do. Played the knockout blow. Two shots running for Taddy. in the hands of Gary Kelly. Huge shot this against the power play, down two. Oh, he's scratching his head, he's not, not happy with that one, shorting. Always hard when you've got to chop and change hands through, whereas here comes Alex Marshall down on this forehand again. Oh, he's found a gap. His weight was perfect. What a way to convert for three. Alex Marshall pumps up the Pirates' code. And that has jumped the Pirates out to a nice lead. We're going to take a quick break here on the Bowl Show, but stick around for more action on the other side.
Welcome back to The Bowl Show. All thanks to Drinkwise. You won't miss a moment if you drink wise. Let's get back into the bowls action. He's interested again. Check this end, and the first set goes to the Pirates for Dawn Heyman's team. Just this wide, but great weight, exactly what a skip asked. Just a reach. Big shot here for Barry Lester. Pulse need to be scoring a multiple on this end. See Ellen Faulkner there just jotting a few down, things down in the notepad. Uh, I wonder if anyone's tried to steal the notepad this week just to try and get some inside intel. dangerous move, still in the notepad. <laughs> <laughs> might, have, might have given some intel uh, ready for this final. I reckon. There is a fair bit to keep a track of, you know, like think about the timeouts, power plays, substitutes, how many bowls your team's played. You've really got to be on the ball with all of that. You'd hate to get to a final and try and call a, you know, a timeout. You haven't got one left or something like that. So you see a lot of the coaches are very switched on to all of that. It's got to be multiples for the poles here. Yeah, look, to be honest, I don't even know if two is going to be enough. I think probably looking for scoring a three. Doubles to six. Gets them back within one. I think if they're three behind playing the last end, that's going to be a difficult task. this time from Alex Marshall. It's another good one in the area for Morton Bay. Pulse holding the one, but Morton Bay got two seconds. off the map with a sense of urgency. He needs to pull up. Okay. Well, still gives chances there. It's still in the area. So options with his last to try and maximise his power play end. Taddy can afford to be a bit defensive here. He can be happy to sort of lose one on this power play end to make it there too. He'll, he'll be hoping to try and keep it to just one if they do lose the end. Well, that would be a result for Morton Bay. Yeah, balls okay, you heard the call from Barry Lester. Come on, you stay your ball. Come on, through that. Looking for the two Morton Bay bowls out clean. So you don't be play, play at Colton Kettler, but don't be played just over the draw of Trilla Jack. Long for two Trilla Jack. So timeout called for that discussion. Wants to dislodge not one, but two Morton Bay bowls. clean there for the Pirates to, to win that end. I think that means they don't play the set out. They go straight to the second set now. It's going to be more than a six, the margin. So they have indeed taken the first set. We will not need to play the fifth end here. It's 10-1, the scoreline. Stick around for more action on the Bowl Show after the break.
Welcome back to The Bowl Show, all thanks to Drinkwise. You won't miss a moment if you drink wise. Let's head back down to the green. Really need to win this end. It's their power play end. They lose this end as well with two to go. It's getting harder and harder. Yeah, I tend to agree. about Dorney staying on that extra end, just keeping the, the momentum rolling on for Brisbane, uh, for the Morton Bay Pirates. Yeah, it certainly makes sense. She's in really good touch. Her and Alex have built up a really good rapport. I think this is a really good move by the Pirates to keep her out there for the maximum amount of ends that she can play. see Brian Burnett next end due to the form of Dawn. Marcel and Fife led them well here. Oh, she doesn't like this one. Oh, wasn't far off. Dawn set up a really good head there. She might be one down, but she's got all three just past the jack. In three ball pairs, that's all you can ask for from your lead, to have it really set up. Taddy's got everything to play for here. He can dead draw the shot if he's just over. Any movement of that jack is a positive for the Pirates. Kelly needs to get there first. That's going to help the case of the Melbourne Pulse. Yeah, that was a really important bowl for the Pulse, and Gary Kelly played that near perfect for what he was after. Is this the end that gets them back into the grand final for Melbourne, or will Alex Marshall answer the call once again? track. Well, if you're watching this game and you've got no allegiance to any team, you'd be hoping that Gary Kelly's next two bowls, this one and he's got one left, are on the money because that gets us even closer to that tie break. Oh, and that one, last one looks a bit just out, I think. I think if it had fallen over, it might have been a chance. Ellen Fife there on screen, willing it to fall in. It has not added to the count. The last for Alex. Advantage pulse. It's open for the draw and to give them a two-shot lead going into the fourth end. Gary Kelly, can he come up clutch once again? He's played it safe on the high side there. Terrific weight, but it will be two. So we're tied up here in Moana as we head into the fourth end of the power play from the Pirates.
crowd really getting involved here now. Two ends remain. At least in regulation play. Tied up after three. Thanks to Drinkwise. You won't miss a moment if you drink wise. Feels like that end the first time the pulse of kind of fired a shot in this game. Yeah, it was a must-win end. And not just not just scoring one. I think they had to score two there. I think one was probably not going to be enough. Yeah, I agree, Kelso. It was important to at least tie the, the set up at the moment or just gain advantage. So it keeps them in it. It's basically a two-end shootout at this point. Linz is ringside. It's game on. Yeah, look, it's uh, so tense down here. The atmosphere's kind of dropped because everyone's on a knife edge. Um, but it really felt like the pulse pinched a bit of momentum back there. So this end is super crucial. Linz, from what you're seeing down there, does it look like the green's changed a little bit? Like, we can see Gary's been off for an hour and come on, and it just seems to have maybe slowed down a little bit with the coolness. Yeah, it, it, it might have been, I think. I mean, Alex has been absolutely on fire against him, so that's probably paid, played a little bit into it. Um, but, yeah, Gat's definitely not as on fire as he was in the first match, and um, he'd be hoping to get this end, I think. Everyone would love down here to see a tie break, but Ryan might have something to do with it. Oh, my gosh. It's all happening down here. Who, who do you think the crowd's uh, supporting the most oh, tonight? Uh, definitely the Pirates. Um, you know, I, I do think there's a little murmur of Pulse supporters out there. And like Kelso mentioned, if you're not on a team, you want to see a tie break. You want to get a bang for your buck, even though it's free entry here at Roma. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think there's definitely the Pirates uh, fan club here, which is awesome to see. Such a great atmosphere. Go, little Elwa. What a shot on the jack. Pulse are on a roll all of a sudden. They certainly are. You can just feel the momentum shifting a little bit. But it just takes the one ball. And remember, Brisbane are playing a power play here. They score a three, it's game over. All right. Last chance for Berno, his first end of the match. Is he going to dislodge? Well, it doesn't hurt. And that's a very, very good shot from Ryan Bennett. Gary, who looks very interested, trails it into the ditch. Great shot there from Gary Kelly. Gary Kelly gets the crowd up here in Moama. It's a bit of a famous saying in bowls. It's not how many you play, it's when you play them. And it's how good you play them too. That is unbeatable. Scenes here. It's such good weight to stay with the jack there. We've just seen this week that jacks move around a lot, um, on, which is quite traditional for indoor surfaces. They do move around a little bit when you really give them a whack. Gary Kelly played terrific weight there to actually stay with it and make sure that it is unbeatable. Gee, it's a good draw. Gary's just talking about trying to get off that bowl where Ellen's foot was and trying to get back to the last bowl that Taddy played. Trying to pick up a multiple here. It's a toucher, is it? Oh, sure is. Wow. wow. There's a shot on now that Gary can play to try and sink the Alex Marshall bowl with that toucher of Ellen Ryan's, uh, Ellen Fife's just in front of that. So Taddy just trying to get another one in the area with this one. Goodness. Which he has done, but he Very sat it good. near his other one. So Gary will be just trying to get those two Alex Marshall bowls now in the ditch. You can see how they're all lined up. So any contact onto Alan's bowl in the middle, the edge is not going to be good enough. Must get it in the middle. It will push Alex Marshall's two bowls into the ditch. So wait. It's a brilliant shot from Gary Kelly to take the ends. One to come for Morton Bay. I don't think he's going to play it. There's no point. It's unbeatable. Morton Bay will declare the end. Go one down. I know they've just got to win the last end and they take home the title. Stick around for more action on the bowl show after the break.
Welcome back to The Bowl Show, all thanks to DrinkWise. You won't miss a moment if you drink wise. We now head back out to the competitions on the green. Yes, in this format, it may as well be all square playing this end. Must win end for both teams. No, sorry, I should reword that. Must win for the Melbourne Pulse and, of course, Brisbane are wanting to try and win this end to seal the deal before the tie break. The tie break would be exciting, though. The tie break would be exciting. You'd have to say on paper at the moment that maybe it favours the Pirates. Last bowl to Alex Marshall and all he needs to, is to draw the set. Two great leads. One five steps up to the plate. in a good spot. You can see Alex Marshall just asking Ryan Burnett just to add a bit. Doesn't want to sit it right next to the jack. Symmetry from Ryan Burnett. Be a little bit disappointed with that. I think he would have been happy to be anywhere past the jack on that ball. You know, just to give it a chance again. So Gary Kelly really thinking about that. I, I think there's a part of him that really wanted Ellen to get up and pop the jack, but there's just so many gaps. Trails. What a shot. And it's in. Five. I think he wanted it, but he was too scared to ask for it. And he <laughs> He, he told her to give it, it. just to give it a chance, and that's exactly what she did. She didn't have a lot of weight on that, but you can see how far the jacks go. Got past the back line and into the ditch. Touch it to play with as well. Morton Bay are up against it to avoid the tiebreaker. Ryan Burnett trotting down after it. Seems to really like this. Oh it's got some good weight. Close. It does! What a, what a shot! Ryan Burnett! That is from the top draw. <laughs> I think he's been watching his skipper play shots like that all tournament. He's thought, I'm going to have a crack as well. Here's my chance to shine. And you can tell he really liked it. You don't often see uh, Ryan Burnett with the trot up, and he favoured that all the way. Six bowls to come. So a few options here for Gary Kelly. He's got Ellen's toucher that he can try and hit in. Misses that, gets Ryan's ball in the ditch. Miss the front, he's saying. Well, he got the front one, but it didn't matter because that's a toucher in the ditch. So because that ball was a toucher that went in and it hit the jack, where the jack's now landed will still be live. So they won't replace the jack. If that was a non-live bowl, uh, that went into the ditch and dislodged where the jack was, it, the jack would have been replaced where it was. So there was just a, a bit of clarification around that, given that it was a toucher that went in the ditch. Taddy will now draw to that spot. It's not a good effort, but... Wow. Not the far ditch. off. Not far off. This is a very, uh, very interesting end to finish this set. Some absolute brilliant bowls being played. It was a great shot. I think Gary would probably feel a little bit almost ripped off because the toucher did move the jack. Had the jack not moved, it would have almost been unbeatable. And now gives Alex Marshall probably maybe 14, 15 inches to draw the shot. We had a pretty good bird's eye view up here as well. If he had just missed the front one, I think he was getting Ryan's ball out clean as a whistle. It's OK from Gary. The drawing of the ditch here has been unreal. Pulse have nearly forced the tiebreaker. It's a 
brilliant shot. Alex now has to choose, does he draw to beat it? Does he sit and stay? He can use that bowl to sit and stay now. This is close. This is very close. Just pulled up. Wow. Okay. Alex Marshall has drawn second shot. The shot ball is not a toucher. So very important here. Gary Kelly wants to get another one. Doesn't want to land it right next to the shot ball, but he needs he needs another shot. He's down very well again. Oh, the consistency. Wow. That's almost three perfect goals from Gary Kelly this end. That is absolutely brilliant. Take a bow. That is brilliant. Drawing to the ditch. So much pressure. And you see Alex Marshall just acknowledge that. He gave quite a, a long flap to those two, that bowl, because that was phenomenal. So they've called timeout, Morton Bay. And the polls hold two. And one last look for Alex Marshall. This would have to be special. All right, so he's just going to have to try and sit and stay. The two shot balls are far enough apart that he couldn't run at the both. He is watching it. This is close. Oh, no, he couldn't, just could he? Just over. We're headed to a tiebreaker. Dawn Heyman takes a deep breath. Each player. She's going for it. What, could she put the jack in the ditch and end it here? Oh, oh my gosh. One bowl tight. Wow, what a time to pull it out. <laughs> Dawn played one of those um, earlier in this tournament. Um, it was on a live stream game. You can go back on Bowls Australia's Facebook or YouTube and actually watch it. She got this jack right in the centre of the belly and it looked like the unbeatable shot of the tournament and it actually bounced out of the ditch and ricocheted up the green about three metres. Oh, heartbreaking. That is tough luck. And a rhino. So we see this often that the the player that takes the chance to run the jack in the ditch will then step aside and let the other player play their two bowls. So essentially you, you're substituting in. You've You've played your lead ball and then you've subbed your next player in to play the next lead ball. So Ryan will play two in a row. Dorney will play the second, the second ball of the, I suppose, the second in this triples match. Ellen five looking good. Well, the race spot is theirs. Stalking it down. Ryan's willing this to run a little bit more. Just another short one. They're almost right on the line there too, which is taking taking the runner shot out of it almost. Over to you, Baz. What's the bend like? I haven't seen the oh, shot yet. Pulse finding similar areas. Still a little bit of room there. So I think the winning bowl has been played just yet. Too much room for these guys. Back out there. Okay, big opportunity here for Barry Lester. If he can nail this. Unfortunately, Morton Bay have got the front almost well and truly blocked up. Pressure is palpable. The nerves, you can see it in his face. Where will it land? It's a pretty decent effort. So the pulse do hold. Well, that last ball is the shot, but it is still a distance from the jack. Wow, the crowd is just the quietest it's been all day. Oh, 
called to a silence, and now they're urging it on from Taddy. Does it have the bend? It's going to have the weight. That is the shot hole. It's still a distance, though. Still got around almost 15 to 18 inches here now to draw the shot. Once again, silence from the crowd. Harry Kelly They've got the right to reply to Pulse. Oh, he likes like it. This. Gary Kelly has got the shot. There's the leader. Fantastic ball there from Gary Kelly. His drawing has been on song these last couple of events. He got off to a slow start this match, but he has absolutely brought this Melbourne Pulse team home. One bullet left in the tank for Alex Marshall. What can he do? Well, Alex has played some absolute bombs today. Can he do it with his last bowl of the finals? It's down to this for the Moreton he Bay Pirates. It. Their last chance in the hands right. of Tuddy. Tracks good, needs it to stop. Is it going to pull up? It doesn't. So the Melbourne Pulse have done it by Gary Kelly on the conversion. And they will take it out in BPL 19. And Lindsay is with the victors. Oh, man, I've got to get in here super quick because the, the uh, uh, vibe down here is amazing. Yes, what a thriller. How does it feel, mate? Well, I can't believe it. I'm absolutely over the moon. Absolutely delayed it. Just thankfully, just found a bit of fire in the belly. And so that one's for Jez and that back in the family. And on a personal level, my Uncle John, I lost my Uncle John recently. And Oh, you're so special. I'm, oh, I'm so proud. I'm so happy. Oh, I'm so good. And Ellen Ryan, did you think that could happen, mate? Oh, you know, anything's possible with these two blokes by your side. So, nah, over the moon. And, um, yeah, go J Dandy Nong Pulse. <laughs> the mighty Pulse Bears, third third victory in the BPL. Must be something special, this franchise. Yeah, three out of the last five in our first one here at Moama. And, uh, you know, I'm so proud of these guys. Ellen all week, unbelievable leading. Her stats just speak for themselves. And, yeah, to uh, overcome some hurdles, but... Gaz said to me yesterday, he said, mate, uh, what are we going to do, you know, with what's going on with Jeremy? And I said, mate, we're going to win this thing. We're going to do it for Jez and the family. So uh, thanks to Dan on Club and all their support. And uh, well done, Moama Bowls Club. Unbelievable. What about our new super coach, Andrew? How do you feel? Fantastic. Did it for Jeremy. Well done, Pulse. Excellent. Well done. And one last uh, BPL 19 champions of Melbourne Pulse. Woo! What a match that was. Join us on the other side of the break for the Bowl Show Awards. Back soon. Welcome back to The Bowl Show. All thanks to Drinkwise, you won't miss a moment if you drink wise. Well, after the first set, you'd put your house on Moreton Bay with the way that they were bowling, but didn't the Melbourne Pulse step it up to become BPL 19 champions? Val, that was just an incredible final. The greatest of escapes, Jordan. That's all I can say. They were 1-10-0-4 behind, <laughs> and somehow, some way, well, there was a pulse. And it was a pretty yes. damn big one. And the Melbourne Pulse get the job done. Barry Lester, Gary Kelly and Alan Fife become three-time champions of the Bowls Premier League. It is quite amazing what they were able to do. And again, faced with adversity, they got it done. And it, it, honestly, one of the best finals I've seen. Yeah, pulling out seven consecutive points in the second set to take it to a tiebreaker. Incredible stuff to end BPL 19. Val, for the last time for BPL 19, let's get into the Bowl Show Awards, starting with the play of the day for Aero Bowls the same line every time what was the play of the day well set one it was all the pirates and if you look at what alex marshall's got to do here there it's their power play on n3 and look at how he strides he's not blinking he knows that this is in the area and this just sets up their mammoth 10-1 win in the opening set have a look at what he delivers here just slides off his own bowl nets a three double that to six and that's pretty much set one, done and dusted. So Alex Marshall, he gets the play of the day. On to the player of the match with thanks to Bower and O'Day because the little things are everything and this man was a big part of Melbourne's response. 
yeah, Gary Kelly, my word, he was unbelievable. This whole tournament, in fact, because he was named the MVP of the Bowls Premier League for the first time in his career. So he thoroughly deserved it. What he was able to do to get them out of trouble at the back end and in this final, he was just, he was magical. And look at the point there. He was he was really feeding off the crowd. And it was really emotional scenes at the end of the match. Um, after he won the MVP award and after he won the title, he lost someone that was really close to him just um, just at Christmas time. And he mentioned it in the speech. And um, he said that it was dedicated to him. And it was a really emotional emotional speech and emotional match for Gary Kelly. And he thoroughly deserved it. What he had, what he was able to do to get them back into this final. I can't understate how hard it is to come back from these margins and that's what he was able to help them do and he features again in the moment of the match all thanks to drink wise if you're choosing to have a drink choose to drink wise what did he do this time Val? well this was to send it to a tie break they're up by one so they're still in a pretty good position in this second set to send it to that one end shootout but have a look at this drawing to the ditch this is so hard to do in terms of weight control jordan and gary kelly watch this bowl come to a halt right on the precipice and there you go. Wow. It's it's so mightily difficult to do, and Gary Kelly did it to perfection. There's a reason why he was the MVP. Uh, Aaron Wilson and Dawn Heyman joining him in that all-star squad, but Gary Kelly, what a shot. Well, what a way to finish BPL 19, the Melbourne Pulse and the Moreton Bay Pirates with a great comeback. The Pulse get the win. That's all we have time for today, but... Next week, we will turn our attention to the Australian Open as we begin our coverage of Australia's biggest bowling competition. We'll cover the finals of all creeds from singles to fours, pairs to juniors, so make sure you tune in. Val, as always, I look forward to seeing you again next week on the show. Yeah, I can't wait, Jordan. The AO is one of the best times of the year, so you will definitely not be disappointed. And we'll catch you next time on The Bowl Show. See you next week. The Bowl Show would not be possible without the generous support of Drinkwise. You won't miss a moment if you drink wise. OMF. Upgrade to OMF's adjustable bed base for customised comfort and improved sleep quality. Barra and O'Day. Because little things are everything. Right at home. Improving the quality of life for those we serve. Aero Bowls. The same line every time. And of course, Bowls Australia. Local legends wanted. A Bowls Green is just up the road. Search Bowls Clubs near me.